Welcome into a new Buff Stampede Radio. This started out as an opportunity for William and I to go back to the big news of Jordan Seaton committing to Colorado. And uh, by the time we hit record, there's more news coming in. Colorado picking up transfers on the offensive line. They have a new old line coach. There's just so much to talk about, William. I don't know where we start. Can we talk about kickers first? Yeah. <laughs> It's been it's been uh, maybe too long since we've had a, a kicker thread on buffstampede.com. So, uh, but yeah, we need we need to create some controversy there. Right. Yeah. Hey, go Mata, my man. Seriously, though, this is uh, this is exactly what you needed to happen in terms of finding guys that are going to create competition up front and hopefully help pr- protect Shadur better. What are your initial thoughts? Uh, Tyler Johnson is maybe the more uh, prominent commit because he was a four star mm-hmm. coming out of high school. He went to Texas, uh, spent time at Houston and, and played left guard there this past season. And then you also bring in uh, Yukari Walker from UConn uh, was their starting center this past season. So a, a couple big uh, additions up front. Yeah. And I think that, uh, um, you know, Tyler Johnson is, uh, well, we got three, three, three commitments so far. Um, um, the obvious one that caused great excitement is Jordan Seaton, but I think the, the one to start with is probably Tyler Johnson because here's a guy who started every game at left guard for Houston last year, pretty 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 high level and, and played very well. And he's also huge. He's 6'5", 320, so he's not going to be anywhere any kind of undersized. Uh, that This is the kind of guy that brings in that power and size and is not going to get pushed around up front because he's faced the kind of guys he's going to face in the, in the Big 12. So I, I, I'm super excited about Johnson. I think it's interesting that he's a left guard uh tyler brown's a left guard and i imagine we we're going to bring based on what we've seen so far we're going to bring in enough guys that that nobody's guaranteed anything and if uh tyler or i guess well they're both tylers aren't they <laughs> be uh it'll be a tyler on tyler fight for left guard or you know find find a place to fit in your five best guys really yeah and uh with phil loadhold taking over there have you processed that yet, or are you kind of taking a wait and see approach? Um, there, there, are, I think pluses and minuses to that hire. The the one negative that would stand out is just his, you know, lack of experience. And I know that was something that maybe you wanted in their next offensive line coach. Well, except I think that he does have that experience. Uh, he, you know, he spent if if I got my timeline right, he spent his last two years as uh, uh offensive analyst working with the offensive line at Oklahoma. And I think the two years prior to that, he was offensive analyst uh, working with the offensive line at Ole Miss. So that's a, you know, a pretty, pretty high level SEC school and, and uh, you know, top end big 12 school. That's four years where he's been working with good power five offensive line coaches. So he should have picked up, you know, coaching techniques and what have you. And, you know, he's six years in the NFL, uh, so he's got the playing experience to, to, to go on as well. I think where we've had problems the last 10 years is, you know, we keep hiring guys that don't have any experience at this level. Um, you know, Bill O'Boyle had no experience player or coach ever at this level. Um, you know, um, I'm actually blanking on a, the Cajun dude from New Orleans. That's probably Mitch a, Rodrigue. A, a, yeah, that's probably a self-defense response right there. I can't remember that name, but um, we, you know, uh, uh, quickly, can I uh, inter- can I interject with a yeah. question? Um, yeah. On your hate rankings, where where is Dan Lanning in in relation to to Mitch Rodrig? Well, uh, Rodrig doesn't really re- doesn't really make the make the cut. You know, he's not top ten. He's he's just he's just a he, he's just a grifter. You know, <laughs> he suckered somebody. Well, you know, he's he. he he, he, to me, is more illustrative of Carl Durrell not having any connections to know people, you know, and, hey, I don't know, it's the America way. He grifted his way into a position he wasn't qualified to handle. And I don't know. But uh, I was going to buy you a, a road rig. You remember he had the uh, the rod system? Yeah. Road rig, road rage system. I, that was going to be my Christmas present to you. But uh, now, now I got to change course. See, everybody's gonna think I'm a hater, man. I'm just going around there. ah, explosive rage. But uh, no, I don't. I, I don't think about him too much. Quite, quite frankly, it, it uh, Clayton Adams from back in the day annoys me more. <laughs> okay, 
But I, you know, what I, what I go back to with those guys is really, it's on the head coach though, to hire a guy, you know, you shouldn't be doing an on the job training for a guy at the power five level. And you shouldn't be hiring a guy that's not even coaching high school at the power five level either. And I think Phil Loho is a different guy because he's spent the last four years at the power five level working with P five offensive line coaches. And he played at this level and he played uh, in the NFL The other thing I like about him is that he didn't have it handed to him. He had to go to JUCO and kind of earn it and get his grades right. And so he's learned a lot of hard lessons, and I think he could pass those on to guys. Yeah, definitely. And does it give you uh, a little bit more optimism with Phil Oldhold taking over uh, as the offensive line coach, given that shortly after he takes the job in Boulder, Jordan Seaton comes commits to Colorado. And that was, um, you know, I think Jordan was leaning towards Colorado, but the fact that um, they were able to have a conversation and and Jordan Seaton ended up deciding to commit to the buffs. Does does that make you kind of optimistic about what load hold could do in that side of things? Yeah. Well, I think that, that, you know, what I understand is that, that the last thing that kind of happened to make, to make the dominoes fall was that meeting with load hold and then Seaton, felt like he was comfortable. I can play for this guy and he'll develop me because, you know, recruiting is, is partially about it largely about the relationship between you and the kid, but there also has to be a belief, you know, you're talking about four and five star guys. They want to play in the NFL. So they want to play for a guy they believe can get them there. And certainly load hold, you know, when a guy like Seton sits down with him, first of all, he's bigger than he is, which is probably pretty rare. Uh, and he's played in the NFL and, and he, you know, Here's a guy, I mean, and I'm trying not to, you know, sugarcoat this and make it sound better than it is, but, you know, the last four years he's been at, at Oklahoma and Ole Miss, man. He, he, he's he, – look at their – go and look at their offensive line. They, they're putting guys in the NFL at both of those places, and he knows what he's looking for and what he's got to see and what he's got to have. So I'm much more confident in him versus O'Boyle. You know, and I, you know, I said this from the first. My concern about O'Boyle was that he'd never had any experience of any kind at this level, and I worried that it that it would backfire, and it did. So you take Load Holt, uh, you know, worked with the offensive line, and I'm, I'm not saying he was the offensive line coach either of those places, but he was the offensive assistant uh, analyst, you know, working with those offensive line coaches. And uh, I think if you're a smart guy and you're working around people like that, you pick things up and you learn it. So. He's not going to, you know, he, when you look at the size of the ginormous dudes they have on the offensive line at Ole Miss and, and Oklahoma, he's not going to bring in undersized dudes. He, he's going to know what he needs. And he had an interesting path through college uh, where right. uh, he, he actually was going to end, end up being, he was planning to be a buff, uh, but ended up having to go the Juco route. Um, so he uh, went the Juco route, got humbled, uh, worked his way to be in a Juco All-American and goes to Oklahoma, plays in one of the best offenses in college football history. And so right. he's he's really seen college football from all the different angles and, and can relate to kids, you would think, as a result of that. Right. You know, so he can relate to the star, the, to the highly rated four or five star guys, because he was one of those guys. But he can also relate to the guys who had to come up a harder way. And you got to give a guy credit. I mean, how many guys go to Juco and then never get heard from again? You know, so there's there's some credit that needs to be given to him there that he's clearly a guy that he sets his mind on things and he sticks with it and he gets things done. And I think that's a positive as far as uh, uh, coaching our offensive line too. Um, you know, everybody, it, 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 the what Coach Prime says is that he blew him away on a, on the one on one interview. And um, I don't I don't imagine that Deion Sanders is a is, is an easy guy to blow away on in an interview because. You know, he's talked to everybody. He's friend, his best friends with some of the most famous people in the world. So you really got to do something to uh, impress him, I would imagine. Yeah, I think when you become as successful as Coach Prime has been, you you develop a really good BS meter. Right, and right. So, uh, you know, I, I think that's a good point in the fact that that interview was so pivotal uh, is a good sign. After Jordan Seaton, the number one ranked offensive tackle recruit in the country, in the class of 2024 committed matt smith and i did an emergency podcast william you've got a regular day job but we left we held back just a little bit i want to get your thoughts on jordan seaton did you get a chance to to watch him on film a little bit and, and garner some more thoughts about what his potential will be in boulder yeah i really did and, and i and i love what i see and i think uh you know playing for img academy means he he got 
probably as good a coaching as you can expect anywhere in America uh, for high school football. And what I see in his film is, is he's got sort of the whole package of size, athleticism, length, but he's very polished and he's very well coached. So, you know, there's a two couple of films that I looked at on his huddle uh, that were very impressive. And, you know, what really stuck out to me is that he's got just really nice athleticism. He can really move. He can really run. He's got great length, long arms, and he uses his hands and arms well, which is not common, I think, in high school kids. But he's got he got he got nice ability to uh, use use his hands and not be faked out to to punch too early and he's really kind of dominant in, in every facet of the game. I picked out a play uh, on that uh, I think it was a mid senior year uh, highlight reel from this past year at the thirty four second mark and it's a goal line run play and he's just very dominant uh, against the defensive end both with his hands and his feet and it's just really pretty to watch and. and one thing that I've noticed is that he, 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 he goes to the whistle. He goes to the finish. I mean, there's a couple of plays where he just drove a guy all the way off the field and past the bench where you couldn't even see him anymore. You know? <laughs> and lots of plays where he's putting guys on the ground. Um, you know, the second play on that same reel, I, I made a notice that, man, he could really move and he was pulling across the line from left tackle to right um, and just uses his hands really nicely and, you know, he's, he's polished, you know, he's not, he, he clearly at the high school level, he hasn't seen the kind of defensive ends and, and linebackers that he'll see in the big 12, but uh, he handles both the speed and the power rush very well. Um, I love his physicality and the pass protection. You know, a lot of guys are kind of passive and pass pro and he's looking to bury dudes even in the pass protection, which is, which is sort of fun and uh, nice to see um, there was a play that I, picked out at uh, the 136 mark in that uh, senior year video where his pass protection was just perfect from, from the first step all the way through his hands were right. His, his first step was right. His feet were right. His test, his stance was right. Got his hands where he was supposed to be turned when he was supposed to turn and just kind of ran this guy up the field. And, and I was just very impressed by that particular play that he's well coached and he's, he's not, you know, kind of guessing, how to pass protect. He's, he really does it pretty well already. So I think he's got enough that he is a legit uh, prospect to start. I mean, you know, certainly right now we don't, we don't have a left tackle on, on the roster. I would, I would say, um, and we'll see who comes in through the portal, but uh, you know, Alabama started a left, a freshman left tackle and they've got all the talent in the, in the world on that team. So there are guys that come in. Uh, there's a reason why they're five-star guys and, uh, you know, he's six five. I wouldn't be surprised. They they list him six five, what two ninety, I think. But I wouldn't be surprised if he's closer to six six because I'm looking at his arm length and it's just really superior. Got really long arms. I think I, I think I saw it listed somewhere as a six six ten wingspan. Arm. Yep, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. That. and you can really see it on the film. I mean, he doesn't let anybody get close to him. And a lot of guys with long arms, they'll they'll let a guy in and they're, they're in here and like. Well, what the hell, man? Why have long arms if you're not going to use them? And he really yeah. blocks out both in the run and the pass. And there's a play. He's got a junior year film in there when he's still playing at St. John's. And it's really, I think it's a second player. It's the 11th second mark. And he's, he's, you watch him, he's in a two point stance and you watch his first step. And then, and then he just really explodes and he uncoils into the defensive end and he rolls his hips and it's just really pretty. The, it's run blocking, right? And he just drives and he run, and that's the play where he runs the guy all the way. And it's a big dude. He just runs him all the way off the field. And I'm like, the last, the last you can see him on the film, the guy's feet come off the air and he's, I'm like, holy shit. I hope there's not a bench right there. <laughs> but the, the technique in those first four or five steps is really beautiful. Um, so he's been taught how to run block. He's been taught how to pass protect. And um, he's not just beating up on smaller kids either. Cause he's, you know, that he, he's bullying some bigger guys out there as well. And he plays with a meanness, you know, he, he, he likes to put guys on the ground. Um, and so I think he's going to come in and have that kind of mentality right from the start and being a bigger guy, load Holt might be a really good uh, mentor for him in that regard. So very exciting. I think, I think it was fun. Well, I wouldn't, wasn't fun at the moment. At, like right before he committed, he dropped us out of his top 10 or whatever like that. And I was like, hey, well, there, there, there goes that. And I think he was just playing everybody at, at that point. That's that's the he was throwing everybody off the scent and it works. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. But so I got to know well, what was, where did you find out the news that Jordan C committed and uh, give us a, a reenactment of your, your reaction. Well, I, I've had bad kind of a, a, a a busy couple of weeks. So I think I, I think I heard it quite a while after, after the fact. And okay. I was pretty excited about it, but uh, it, I mean, I think when I first heard it, I was like, well, that's gotta be a mistake. He already he just said we weren't in the, in the running, you know? And, and then my, my next thought was, well, you know what? The, the, the other thing that popped immediately in my, my, my mind was, well, that puts the rest, the idea that prime is great with skill players, but can't recruit big guys. So that, that, that was a very positive thing for me because I, you know what, I had that concern and I, I know some, some people out there demanding, you know, slavish devotion to prime, but Hey, you know what, you got to prove it to me. I'm sorry. And now he has proven it. So we'll move forward and feel pretty good about things. Did you happen to see coach prime's comments on TV uh, that was just posted, I think within the last day and uh, for the listeners out there that, that haven't seen this yet, uh, Coach Prime said on, on during a television interview, quote, I love Boulder, Colorado. I don't plan on being anywhere else in my coaching career. It's my desire to one day retire and then ride off on a white horse with a black hat in the sunset in Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> Winning championships, make- plural, he added. That's what I want to do. So, uh there, there, there were rightfully some some Colorado fans pretty excited to to hear him, yeah. Uh, give that t- that level of commitment to kind of how he views his his future as a coach. And I think that was there. I think that was always there. If you were paying attention, you were watching all the different videos, and and he's he's just struck me from almost from the first moment he got here that he's kind of awestruck by Boulder and by Colorado and by the whole thing and by, you know, Rick George and his relationship and by the fan support and everything else. And and it's just been very clear to me, you know, if you're, if you're doing anything more than just a surface level viewing, this guy loves where he is. And, you know, I think as other people have mentioned too, he's the CEO of Colorado football. You ain't doing that in the SEC, man. No way. You got to answer to people. In the SEC, you got to answer to people at Oklahoma. You got to answer to people at Texas and Florida State. And Prime don't got to answer to nobody, man. <laughs> and that's how he likes it. And I think it's going to work. So um, I've thought for quite a while now that this this would be his long term home. And you know, I don't think he can make it any clearer than he just did. But there's still going to be the people saying the same thing until you know until yeah. he's there four or five years, you know, until we, right, quite frankly, until we get to the year after Shadur and, and Shiloh, you know, that will be the story. That will be what the the the, the non-believers yeah. so now. Now I'm saying it, the non-believers. Well, <laughs> well those those stories get clicks, right? Anytime you write about yeah. Stephen right. A. Smith, you know, had us asking questions at coach prime's next press conference as a result of just a comment he made during a sports talk debate show. And so uh, because coach prime uh, brings so many eyeballs and so many clicks to stories that, yeah, you're you're just never going to avoid it no matter what he says publicly. But um, I think the diehard fans have had a sense that he was going to be around longer than some of those outsiders thought, you know? Right. And then, you know, what's really sort of impressed me in the year plus, or I don't know, maybe it's not quite been a year, I guess, that he's been here is he's entirely a different person than I thought he would, would was, would be, uh, you know, because all I ever knew was the prime time persona, you know, and, and the surface sort of level that you see, um, which is what he wants the world to see. But since he's been here, he's opened that up and opened himself up quite a bit. You know, it's, it's kind of funny. Some people were making a joke about, Oh, you said he wants privacy, man. I get it. Cause he, he's, he's put his whole life out there since he got here to Boulder. And if you're paying attention at all, man, it, this, this guy is deep and he's intelligent and he's caring. And there, I never, I never knew all that was there, you know, but there's this caricature of prime as the guy with the flashy bling, you know, and, uh, it goes so much deeper than that. And what, what, what truly impresses me is that he's an intelligent man that he's highly competitive and he learns from his mistakes. And, you know, I know a lot of people were, were disappointed in some of the on the field coach during the game coaching decisions, but I don't think, I don't think this is a guy that makes the same mistake twice. Well, it's been a busy couple of days, who knows by the time I even get this downloaded and up to the folks, maybe there's more news that's already breaking out there. It's, it's been a, 
a quick start to the off season for the Buffs. A lot of uh, news that made people pause early in the off season, and, and they've bounced back with uh, a lot of positive news here in the last couple of days. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to listen to it, Matt Smith and I did do a, an emergency pod after Jordan Seaton's commitment, and, and we sp- spoke quite a bit more in depth on that. And William, uh, was good getting our schedules yeah. to connect here this weekend because, yeah, uh, yeah I, I needed I needed to know uh, what your thoughts were. Uh, this is the biggest offensive line recruit to ever commit to Colorado in the modern era, at least. Uh, yeah. Ryan Miller was a five star, but not quite quite as highly rated as right. Jordan Seaton is. Um, and so uh, it, it's a big deal. And, and I needed to get you on here. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, I think, I think, you know, everybody's going to focus on Jordan Seaton, but I think Tyler Johnson maybe is just as big. Uh, I think, I think, you know, Jordan Seaton gives you a certain credibility uh, as a staff and as a, as a coach program. And now other five stars will look at you, but, but, but Tyler Johnson's a guy that comes in as a high level at a high level you know, he started every game at left left guard last year there, and um, six five three twenty man. That's just what we've been asking for. Uh, you know, we we were kind of looking around us to, to kind of find the uh, updated weight for uh, Yakiri Walker, but you know, a guy that started every game at center last year at UConn is probably going to be a pretty good player. So we'll see what he brings in. And like I said earlier, man, ideally, you know, we bring in two or three dogs at every position and let them fight for it. You know, and people will say, well, nobody's coming here to be a backup. Well, that's exactly my point. Right. You bring in every guy and and, and you don't promise them anything. You say you try. I, get, I promise you get an, uh, you get the opportunity to compete for it. And the best guy wins. And then you wind up with a good with the best starter and, and a good backup. We, we didn't really have either of, um, you know, I mean, I, I just look at Tyler Johnson at, at his size. And I'm like, you know, you put it, it, put him in there and and puts put equal size on either side of my you know there's not even any gaps to get through <laughs> for sunlight much less players so it's pretty exciting all right william i gotta run i gotta take our kids over to the ymca get their energy out get them off the screens um and maybe i'll be running back to my office yeah. for more news <laughs> to, to have to report on but i appreciate you and as always thanks everybody out there for tuning in